What's going on guys, it's Jimmy here with your second stimulus check update. And we're gonna go over several different things in this video that is new developments regarding the second stimulus check and the unemployment extension. But first I just wanna say, click the subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, and don't forget to like this video, it really helps out our channel. Okay, first up, the House of Representatives is now back in session, back in Washington. And they're going to need to take action on several different things pretty quickly to get some movement before the election and the government shutdown. Number one is the government will have a government shutdown in about two weeks if they don't come to an agreement to either pass a continuing resolution where they basically say, okay, we're going to just follow the budget from last year and we're just going to extend it for a month or two or three this year to prevent a government shutdown. They had a verbal agreement on that with Nancy Pelosi from the Democrats and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin for the Republicans, but now it seems like they might not do that. So if they don't come to an agreement either through a bill or through a continuing resolution, we will see a government shutdown happen in about two weeks, which is pretty close to the election. It's only about 30 days before the election at that point. And I don't think the Republicans want to see that as the Republicans' number one priority at this point is to get the president reelected. And their strategy to do that is to prevent a government shutdown and to also pass more stimulus before the election to get as many votes as they can, to get as many people on the president's side as they can. And they want to do this through a couple of different ways. They want to pass a stimulus check. They want to pass an unemployment extension. And then they also want to pass money for small businesses through the PPP program, which is the Paycheck Protection Program. The president has been very active as of recent with his presidential executive orders, and he just passed one on Sunday, and it looks like he's going to be doing more, a lot more, before the election. As you can see here in President Donald Trump's tweet from Sunday, he says he just signed a new executive order to lower drug prices. My most favored nation order will ensure that our country gets the same low price that Big Pharma gives to other countries and that the days of global free riding at America's expense are over. President Donald Trump on Sunday signed a long-awaited executive order aimed at lowering drug prices by linking them to the cost of same drugs in other nations. The executive order requires that, a, that the Secretary of Health and Human Services immediately test a payment model for Medicare to pay no more than the most favored nation price, meaning that the lowest cost paid in other developed countries for specific high cost drugs and products. Lowering drug prices is a top issue for voters along with stimulus checks and unemployment extension, and the move comes just weeks before the election. The order is also controversial given that many Republicans oppose the idea as price control, which is associated with Democratic proposals for lowering drug prices. And we have been seeing a lot of presidential executive orders from the president. He had the unemployment extension, the eviction moratorium, the student loan payments pause. We've had a lot of them. We now have this new drug control, which is going to provide prescriptions for a lot of seniors and other people at much lower prices than they have had in the future. And honestly, the president is going to continue to do things like this before the election as he tries to garner up as many votes as possible. The president has already said that there's $300 billion in a fund sitting from the first stimulus package that is unused, and he wants to use it for stimulus checks to be sent out directly to the people. And if Congress can't come to an agreement that they're exploring ways to just pass that money through a presidential executive order, I personally think that is going to happen if we get closer to the election and Congress doesn't come to an agreement. I also think that I, I thought this before when the president passed the other presidential executive orders. Again, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. I just say things kind of how I see them or how they are. 
I kind of thought that when the president came out with those other four presidential executive orders, that the Republicans kind of backed away from the negotiations the last several days before that and said, oh, well, we couldn't come to a deal. And then, boom, the president literally came out the next day and said, well, I'm just going to pass it through presidential executive order. And he basically claimed all the credit. I think that's a very likely possibility that he will do that again with the stimulus check if, again, they can't come to an agreement and he'll just use a presidential executive order to pass that money that's already been allocated for stimulus money and he'll just sign the presidential executive order to use it for stimulus checks just like he did before with the stimulus money. Actually, it was the disaster relief fund which is technically, you know, what we are in during a pandemic. And he just used that money for the presidential executive order for unemployment. The Republicans think that pressure on Nancy Pelosi is the key to their agreement or their negotiations to get Nancy Pelosi to come to an agreement on the stimulus package before the election. Senate Republicans see putting pressure on Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the lead Democrat in the House, as the key to getting a deal done on another stimulus package before the elections and are counting on vulnerable House Democrats to move the Speaker off her demand for a package costing more than $2 trillion. Republican lawmakers say that last week's procedural vote to advance a $500-$700 billion stimulus package that failed in the Senate, which all but one Republican senator supported and all Democrats opposed, was designed to give political cover to vulnerable incumbents and put House Democrats on the defensive. The question is, does this force Nancy Pelosi to listen to her 20 members in districts where the Chamber of Commerce has endorsed the Democrat? Schumer's not pressure. This is all on Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi's running the show, the senator added, noting that 117 House Democrats signed a letter to Nancy Pelosi last month asking her to take up the Worker Relief and Security Act act and to pass another stimulus package. Nancy Pelosi literally has 117 of her own Democrats in the House urging her to just make a deal for a stimulus package. And up until this point, she's basically just ignoring her own party, what her own Democrat congressmen and congresswomen are saying to her to just take a deal or to just make a deal. She basically just ignored them up to this point. And there's some question on if these Democrats will basically vote against her, even if she tells them no to vote on a stimulus package. And we might see that happen with news that the Problem Solvers Caucus, which is made up of 24 Republicans and 24 Democrats from the House, are coming out with a new stimulus bill that is supposed to be a bipartisan agreement and is and is designed to have both the Republicans and the Democrats for it because it's made by this Problem Solvers Caucus, which is made of both Democrats and Republicans. So if they come out with a bill that's supposed to be a middle ground agreement, and Nancy Pelosi still says, no, 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 we want $2.2 trillion, these House members, the Democrats, might actually vote against her because they've already written her a letter, 117 of them, saying, we need to just make a deal and if this deal comes out and it's bipartisan, it's in the, it's supposed to be an agreement in the middle between the two of them, then Democrats might actually vote against Nancy Pelosi to pass this bill. And I really think that all the Republicans are going to vote for this because all we've been seeing in the last couple of weeks is from the Republicans is, are saying, we want stimulus, we want unemployment, we want to pass it. The president's saying that. Uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin saying that. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows is saying that. Even Mitch McConnell, you know, Mitch better have my money. Even he has been saying that we need to pass a stimulus package before the election. So I think they're going to take what's on the table. And remember, their recent bill just had a whole bunch of things in there that both House Democrats and Republicans want. So I think the Republicans are going to probably vote yes to any bipartisan group bill that comes out because they want to pass the stimulus package before the election because they want Donald Trump to be reelected. 
And that's exactly what we've seen from White House National Economic Advisor Larry Kudlow just in the last few days. Larry Kudlow said that the president was skeptical of providing more funding to state and local jurisdictions, but also said that the administration would be willing to agree to additional funding if it were virus-related or basically a stimulus package. Also, I just want to say that I have a couple things here that are going to probably help a lot of our viewers. Number one is Amazon is hiring an additional 100,000 new employees. So if you or anybody you know is looking for a job, Amazon is hiring 100,000 people nationwide right now. Amazon said on Monday that it will hire an another 100,000 workers its fourth such run of this year. The positions will include part-time and full-time positions in both the U.S. and Canada. And the retail giant is opening 100 new warehouses and operating locations in September, and several of the newly created positions will reportedly be at the new locations. I also want to say there are several programs from the United States government right now that is basically giving you either free food or free money for pe money for food, I should say, to people who qualify. The USDA has extended free meal programs for children all the way through the end of the year. The Department of Agriculture announced Monday that it is extending and expanding a critical food assistance program that has been providing free meals to millions of children during this pandemic. The program typically provides free meals to children during the summer months, but the department started it early when schools began closing due to the pandemic, which officials said had been planning to let some key parts of the program expire in August and September. But the program announced in a statement on Monday that in addition to extending the assistance through December 31st, it's also expanding access to it. The changes including allowing meals to be served at any time throughout the day and allowing officials to distribute them in all areas at no cost. Parents or guardians will also be able to pick up food for their, ch their children which can be beneficial for families with children who are at higher risk for contracting the virus. And also, the USDA has been expanding monthly SNAP benefits several times throughout this year, which provides money for you to buy food with. I will put links for these programs down below in the descriptions, so if you're having trouble buying food for either you, your family, or your children, or anybody you know, you might want to share this video with them. I will put the links to this down below in the description. If you are on a mobile phone, you need to click the down arrow next to the title of this video down below to open up the description, and the links will be there in that part of this video down below in the description. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on new videos coming out. And hit the like button for me down below. It really helps out our channel. You can click on these videos to watch my newest stimulus check videos next. And this video teaches you how to start an Amazon FBA business where you sell products on Amazon as your own business. You can click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks, and I will see you in the next video.